Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of my relaxing coding vlog series. In this vlog I'll be finishing up the changes that I started for my book and mostly I'll be focusing on the backend and fixing some of the security and other problematic areas that I created in my previous vlog. This is the last episode in the three-part series where I'm implementing the progress tracking feature that one of the users requested, but if you're new here you don't have to watch the previous two vlogs, everything that I will talk about is going to be pretty clear and self-explanatory. However, if you're curious why I'm still carrying a pencil with me, you should definitely watch the previous vlog, but if you know, you know. So this laptop that I have is a new M4 Pro MacBook Pro. It's a 14 inch with 24 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. And a lot of people ask me what my experience is with this machine. So before I start with coding, I will make an announcement that the next video will be about the MacBook and we will make a little bit of a break between the coding sessions. I had it for a couple of months now and I feel like I have enough information to give you guys that goes a little bit beyond just the specs and the boring stuff that we all already know. And I'll try my best to make a really nice informative video for you guys. Oh, here's a fun little detail. I had this hat made a while ago and I don't know if I ever showed it to you guys but it says business hat because at some point I was really into researching how business works and I even made like a secondary channel that I never actually uploaded anything on that's called business hat. So there's a little fun fact. But anyhow, a while ago I made a book about software engineering and long story short, a lot of people actually checked it out and I had this one user request a feature where they wanted to track progress as they go through the book by being able able to check certain pages as completed. So this is basically what I'm working on and in the past two vlogs I've done the UI, I've done the basic API implementation for the endpoints to get and post progress as you're going through, but I must say that I did a pretty naive job at implementing those set endpoints. And so in this vlog I'll primarily be focusing on improving them, removing some of the security and other issues, and I'll try to walk you through my thought process and why I'm doing certain things a certain way. But again if you're new here the overarching philosophy of my code is that it's sort of under-engineered and a lot of people like to call me out on that but it's fine. I feel like this approach of just going in implementing only and exactly what you need has served me well for over 10 years now as I've been a developer professionally. So let's do a bit of a code review. What is good and what is bad about the code that I already have? And so while it's good that I'm cherry picking the exact property from the payload that I need in this case completed, it is not good that I'm not checking what it is. So the first improvement obviously was to check the type of it and make sure that I'm not just blindly saving part of my payload to the database. And this is the part of under engineering that I talked about. A lot of people would suggest to use a data validation library. But in my case, because the scope of this endpoint is so small, I don't expect to change its payload anytime soon. And so it was more appealing to me as a developer to not install an external library and instead just rely on the features of the language that I have at my disposal. Another thing that is interesting to consider is that this is pretty much everything that this endpoint will ever do. And so as such, at this point, I don't feel particularly insecure about the fact that I'm doing everything in one function, including the validation and saving things to the database. But here is a question for you. In an endpoint like this, if you don't have an authenticated user, should you return a 401, a 403 or a 404? It's very interesting. I first noticed that GitHub actually returns 404 and I thought about why and then I realized it's simply to deter bots from constantly hammering and discovering protected endpoints. Because if a bot receives a 404, it'll most likely give up. But if it receives a 401, it will keep hammering it until something breaks. And since then, I've adopted a similar type of approach to my own endpoints. But anyhow, here's another fun fact. Maybe some of you don't realize that when recording these videos, I typically blow up the font size way up because in order for it to look natural on YouTube, it has to be extremely big in real life. So I played around with keyboard shortcuts to override the default behavior, which is to zoom in the entire interface and instead just zoom in and out my code. And speaking of keyboard shortcuts, another change that I made recently in one menu, which is the window manager that I made that I'm also using here, is to create a custom screen area that is like centered on the screen, but not entirely full screen and then put it on the same exact key as the full screen area so that I can cycle between them. And I really enjoyed using one of the features that I spent some time working on. It was kind of a fun thing to do.
On the flip side, what wasn't so much fun is when I got this notification that NPM had a new major version. And anytime this happens, I get this sinking feeling in my stomach and I think, what did you break now? Admit it. But anyhow, after ignoring it as any sane person would and restarting my server, things started working and you can see here, if you scroll to the bottom of every page, there is a checkbox and when you click it, it will save your completed status in the database. And if you will excuse the pun, there is only one small thing to fix before I can call this feature completed. And that is to simply update the check mark in the navigation on the left to show when you click on the checkbox at the bottom of the page. It was a simple task, but I learned a new quirk of JavaScript and I wanted to share it with you. I mean, maybe it's not a quirk of the language, but it's still a quirk. Maybe some of you know that when you're working with an HTML anchor element, which is essentially a link, it will expose an href property, but its value is not the same as the value of the href attribute because the property seemingly returns the full URL of the page that you're linking to, whereas the href attribute returns what you actually have set in HTML. I thought that was an interesting quirk and this is exactly why I'm making these vlogs because almost every time that I sit down to code something, one of these little things come up and I just want to share them with you. But anyhow, I just spent the rest of my time vibe coding, I guess, or in other words, reviewing the code that is supposed to be committed without any tests. And then I went ahead to deploy it on Railway, which is the hosting platform that I'm using. And it's not sponsored by them in any way, but I just find them convenient and I like this feature where they visualize the architecture you have and the connections between your services if you happen to be referencing them from one another. I just thought that was kind of cool. And so that's pretty much it. I think we can call this feature completed. And yeah, by the time you're watching this, it's already in production. And as an aside, there is a lot of free pages in that book, so I'm really hopeful that some of you will check it out. Maybe even just for fun. And in the meantime, I decided to take a quick stroll because we finally have some nicer weather in Norway. And if you enjoyed the video, a like and a sub would be very much appreciated and I'll see you in the next one.